Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of Hashtag Ask Firebase. My name is David East. And I'm Simit Chandel. Today we're here to answer your questions from YouTube, Stack Overflow, Twitter, and basically wherever we hear from you. So if you want your question answered, make sure to hit us up with the Hashtag Ask Firebase. And David, we've been receiving a fair amount of questions about Firebase extensions. But well, let's start with the basics. What is an extension? An extension is a no-code solution to common serverless problems, like translating text in Firestore, triggering an email when a document is created, and syncing MailChimp audiences with Firebase authentication users, and yeah, and a lot more. Hmm, sounds good. Let's take a look at some questions. Gabe asks on YouTube, how do I know what the code does in extensions? Well, Gabe, that's a great question. Extensions are 100% open sourced and available for you to read on GitHub in the Firebase extensions repo. The link is in the description. Take a look at the URL shortener code extension. It's just about 75 lines of code, including the license, but we can see that it creates an on write trigger for a Firestore document and calls out to bit.ly to create a short link. Each extension is open sourced, so if you have any questions about what it does, you can always read the code. Great question again, Gabe. Oh, Simon, I got a present for you. Oh, really? What is it? It's a next question. Tamiz asks, how do I generate a thumbnail for images uploaded to Firebase storage? Great question, Tamiz. This is one of the best examples of an extension because resizing images is surprisingly complex. So we want to make this really easy with an extension. So let's actually take a look on how to set it up. All right, here on the extensions page, I'm going to install the resize images extension. And the first thing you do is you review the APIs that need to be enabled and the resources created. So in this case, I need to enable the cloud storage uh, API. And I also want to create a resource of a cloud function that's going to be named generate resized image. And each extension always provides a nice little indicator of what it does. The next thing is to review the access that's going to be granted. So we're going to be granting access to full control of GCS resources so we can you know, create images. The next thing is to configure the extension. So I can select where I want it to be. I'm going to keep it at the default. And then what's the name of the storage bucket? And we'll pre-populate that with your existing storage bucket. So now to the heart of the extension, and that's configuring what the sizes of the resized images are. And that starts with a width and a height. And you can set it to whatever you want, but I'm gonna leave it at the default of 200 by 200. Then you decide whether you want the original file deleted, which I do not. And then now you specify where the resized images end up being uploaded to. So if you upload a file called dog.jpg to slash images slash dog.jpg, by default, that'll be created in a folder called thumbnails within the images directory. And you'll see that when we get it uploaded in just a minute. And then lastly, if you want to set a cache control header, you can do that, but I'm going to leave it to the default. So now I'm going to install the extension and this, you know, sometimes takes three to five minutes. So let's just speed things up. All right, so that has been installed. So let's click get started. And this gives us all this information about how the extension works. It can teaches us how to see it in action and tells you all this in-depth information about the extension. You can actually go back and review your settings or even reconfigure it and then still see the APIs and resources involved and of course the access. So let's get started. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go to upload a file, but first let's create a folder for it. So we'll just call it images and clicking into the images folder, I am going to upload a file. And that file is just me drinking coffee. And you can see right here that it's 642 by 648. So we'll get that resized after it's uploaded. So after it's uploaded, you can see that it's about 500 kilobytes. And a little hack here is if you click on images, it'll refresh the bucket. And now when I click in here, we have our thumbnail image which is much less, under 100K. And if I go down to the file location, I can get a new access token and open it up in the browser. And right here, 200 by 200. So that's how you set up extensions to generate thumbnails. Great question, Thamiz. Now it's time for the tip of the week. Text translation with extensions. 
Extensions are all about not having to reinvent the wheel. And translating text is one of those things that we've all done before. And actually, four years ago, I answered this question on hashtag Ask Firebase. And this was even before our Cloud Functions existed. So let's just get extensions to handle this for us instead. Here's how you set it up. Here in the extension page in the Firebase console, I'm going to install the Translate Text extension. The first thing you do, like always, review the APIs and the resource created, like the Cloud Translation API, and then the resource of the Cloud function, which is called FS Translate, that just listens for uh, documents that are created in Firestore, so you can translate the message or the text inside of them. Next, we're going to review billing and usage. This does require billing, but you only are charged when you go beyond the free tier. And lastly, reviewing the access granted the extension. Now, time to configure. And so first you select where you want the Cloud Function deployed. I'm going to set it as the default. And then I want to specify the target languages for translations. And so here you want to use any ISO 639-1 codes, which I totally know what those are. And you can get a list of those on this link right here. And since I know Italian is one, I can just provide a comma and then IT. Now I'm going to specify what is the collection that we want to listen to translations on. This can be messages, notifications, or anything that makes sense, but I'm just going to leave it at the default. And then I need to specify what the input field is. So what is the actual you know, field that we want to translate? So I'm going to use the field of message. And then what is the output? And so it's going to be translated message in my case. And then once I'm ready, I'm going to install this extension. So extensions usually take about three to five minutes to install, like we talked about before. So speed it up, and we are done. So when I click Get Started, we can check out all this information, just like we did before, about seeing it in action. And the heart of this extension comes right here in the Using the Extension section. If I give it a message of my name is Bob, it will return to me the translated message with all of the keys of the uh, language codes and the translated text. And I can do that by just ed editing that data in the Firestore console. And just like the other ones, we can also configure these. We can add languages, remove languages, just do whatever you know makes sense uh, down the line. So now I'm going to open up the dashboard, and it's time to create a new collection. So I'm going to click Start Collection and paste in the translations. Then add a document. The translated field is message. And I'll just type in just like a totally normal message, you know, just, just something simple. And then I'll save that. And in just one second, we get all of our translated messages from all the languages that we supplied. So that's my tip of the week. And we're actually going to start doing more tips like this. So if you want to see something covered, let me know in the comments. And that is all we have for you today. But if you want us to answer a question, make sure to post it up on YouTube, Twitter, Stack Overflow, with the hashtag AskFirebase. And we will see you on the next episode.